Ombudsman, noun, Swedish from Old Norse, Ombudsmeda, representative, plenipotentiary, an independent body appointed to represent interests of citizens by investigating or responding to individuals' complaints about maladministration or infringement of rights. That, in a nutshell, is what we do at the Office of the European Ombudsman. What is unique is that we do not operate at a local, regional or national level. No, our investigations are limited to cases of maladministration in the institutions of the European Union. By maladministration we mean administrative irregularities, abuse of power, lack of transparency and discrimination. The fact is that your rights as a European citizen may occasionally be violated. The important thing is to ensure that this happens as rarely as possible. That has been our aim since 1995, when our office was set up following the Maastricht Treaty. Since then, the Treaty of Lisbon has strengthened the role of citizens in the process of European integration and has established their fundamental rights, one of which is the right to good administration. But we digress. As we were saying, we respond to complaints made by individuals. Excuse me, I think there's something wrong with this procedure. Or we investigate on our own initiative. One thing is certain, we act impartially and entirely independently. So our first task is always to establish whether we are the best placed to deal with the problem raised. Often, the answer is no, in which case we redirect the complainant towards a more appropriate solution. If the complaint is admissible and meets all the requirements, we take action. When the complaint is justified, we try to reach a friendly solution, which means that the institution corrects the error and the complainant receives an apology or even compensation. Let's take this Belgian NGO working in the Congo as an example. Subsidised by the European Commission, the NGO in question was required to submit invoices to justify its expenditure. As it was difficult to obtain these invoices in the field, the NGO obtained the Commission's approval to present alternative proofs of expenditure. Some years later, the NGO was fined for claiming the costs which were considered ineligible because they breached the contract with the Commission. The Ombudsman persuaded the Commission to reimburse the sum of €104,000. The NGO won its case without having to go to court and at no expense. In some cases, the Ombudsman's activity can also influence a decision. This influence may have a minimal effect, or, alternatively, it may lead to more radical changes. Such was the case of a complaint about a medical treatment for acne. The product in question is described to treat severe acne. Although it is effective, it is not risk-free and can have unwanted side effects, including depression. In the 2000s, reports of teenage suicides following the use of this medicine caused an outcry. One member of the public wanted to have access to all the documentation relating to the medicine. The European Medicines Agency, EMA, initially refused to release the requested documents. However, the Ombudsman succeeded in persuading the agency to accept the complainant's request. What's more, the EMA decided to amend its internal policy and to make public all documents in its possession, both past and future. This particular case had a significant impact on the issue of public access to documents and, more broadly, on the transparency of the European institutions. It was, therefore, a landmark victory to add to our list of successes. Unfortunately, things are not always that straightforward. Occasionally, the Ombudsman makes recommendations which are not followed. One prime example is the case of public consultations. A Spanish lawyer complained to the Ombudsman that most public consultations held by the Commission were conducted in English and French, even those on matters of general interest. This doesn't make sense for consultations which are supposed to involve all European citizens. The Ombudsman questioned the Commission, which replied that it had neither the budget nor the resources to make publications in 23 languages the norm. Since the Commission failed to respond to the solutions proposed, the Ombudsman had no option but to close the case with a critical remark against the Commission. He was supported by the European Parliament, who had questioned the Commission on the same matter. So there you have three examples of our work, three out of the thousands of complaints we deal with. 
That's enough to fill several theatres. Our activities have helped to highlight inefficient procedures and outdated methods. They have helped the European institutions to improve their performance and therefore the service they provide to the public. And we will continue with this aim. Because fundamentally, our primary objective is to ensure that you, European citizens, can have confidence in the European institutions, including our own.